Hey guys, welcome back. Today on The Untidy Artist, I'll be showing you how I make teardrop soap. Now, if you've never made soap before, you do want to make sure that you have a basic understanding of soap making. I will put a link below to a tutorial I've done as well as more information of other wonderful tutorials that you can find for soap making. In this, I will be showing you a successful attempt at a teardrop as well as a failed attempt. So let's grab some supplies and get started. Now, to color the layers of the teardrop in the soap, I'll be using some mica. I have spicy tomato from Mad Oils, and Mad Oils has the most brilliantly beautiful mica. I've got Tangerine Dream, which is a really pretty kind of soft orange color. Tahitian Till is a nice light teal color. I have a darker color called Peacock, and I love this mixed with the Tahitian Till. And then I also have Winter White, and this is from Nurture Soap. I have my oils all melted down. In this, I've got some kokum butter and some mango butter. I've also got olive oil and castor oil and I and coconut oil. So I'll be putting the recipe for that below. I've got some Tessa silk that I dissolved into my lye water as well as some sodium lactate. And this is going to help it, our soap to harden up. Um, and get come out of the mold easier. Then I've got this yummy, yummy citrusy scent from Matte Oils. I love their fragrance oils. This is one of my favorites. It's just this bright, happy, citrusy scent. And so let's go for it. I have my oil and my lye both right around 80 degrees. It's all melted down nicely. I've got my silk fibers uh, dissolved into my lye water as well as my sodium lactate. And using a strainer, I'm going to gently pour my lye water into my oils. And then I'm going to take my stick blender and gently, gently, gently start to stir this together. Now the trick with the teardrop is that you wanna make sure that the your soap batter is a good consistency. You don't want it too runny, you don't want it too thick. So I stirred mine for a few seconds um, with my spatula and then I used the stick blender and until I got it the consistency that I wanted it and it did take me a while to stir that up so just work slowly now I'm going to pour my batter into five little cups and I'm pouring off about an ounce ounce and a half of my soap batter um, I'm pouring equal amounts into each cup so I have five little cups and then I'm going to take my mica that I have uh, mixed in with some olive oil and I'm just going to put a little bit of each color in each cup and then I'm going to take the white and I'm going to color my base. Um, just, I wanna add just a little bit of white to that to give it more of a creamy color. Then I'm going to gently stir the soap. Now I like using a, this little whisk instead of a stick blender because it mixes in the mica really well but it keeps my soap a nice consistency. So I'm starting with my lightest color then I'm going to move to my orange, my red, and then my blues. So I don't have to clean off my whisk in between. Now you'll see this soap batter is staying a really nice consistency. The best way to explain it is that it's so when you pour it in you don't want it so thin that the colors are dropping to the bottom you want it to sit right on the top but you also don't want it so thick that you can't pour it having the soap the right consistency is one of the biggest tricks to making the soap and I did make quite a few batches before I found one that worked well now I'm going to pour off about a third of my batter into these two little funnel cups and I'm going to pour the rest of my batter into this little soap mold. And then I'm going to start drizzling my colors. Now I'm gonna take my cup with my first color. I've already decided what order I'm gonna put them in. And I'm going to go back and forth a few times. This one I went uh, back and forth three times. And sometimes I go two times, sometimes I go three times. The key is getting even layers of the colors. So gently pour it in and you can see that these colors are laying right on top of each other. You don't want the colors to drop down into the soap. You want them to kind of sit on the top. But as you pour each layer, it spreads the layer underneath it out. So all of these little layers of color are staying right on top of each other. And you don't want the colors to come too far out to the edges. So I like to keep my eye on that because if the soap colors come out all the way to the edges, it's harder to get the teardrop, for me anyway. So I decided to do the greens and the turquoise on the bottom and then the red and orange in the middle and then more of my greens at the top. So I'm just going back and forth, layering all of these different colors with as steady of a hand as possible. 
Now once you have all of your colors layered in, you're gonna grab your extra batter that's in the two separate containers and the trick is to pour it at the same time down the side slowly. We're pushing all of those colors in and that is where I messed up. I totally lost control of my hand and instead of pouring equally back and forth, I poured mine at different times which messed up my teardrop swirl. Now in a perfect soaping world, I would have poured it back and forth just kind of like I'm pouring right now. You wanna make sure that that batter pours right down the edge because what you want it to do is push all of the colors in the middle towards the center creating your teardrop. So obviously that was a huge soap fail, but um, I made another batch that I actually did do and I was able to successfully um, pour it down the sides without my hand freaking out and spilling it all over my table. And so I've got that that I'll show you at the end too. Now I'm decorating the top of my soap and I'm just taking my extra colors and I'm doing little lines of the color on the top and I'm kind of going in order of the colors that I layered the soap, if that makes any sense. So because I ended with the darkest color, I used that in the middle and then I'm working my way out. And then what I like to do, because I love sparkly things and I love mica, I'm going to take a little dropper and I'm going to actually just drop a tiny bit of mica um, on into on top of each color. And so, You'll see I'm just taking a little bit of it and I'm gonna, this is my darkest color and I'm going to just put little droplets of my mica that's mixed with the oil on top and this is gonna swirl into my soap really pretty. So I do that with all of the different colors. I didn't however do it with the white. And once that's all done, this is the fun part. I'm going to grab a bamboo skewer and I'm going to swirl the top of my soap. Now I decided to start um, at one corner and go back and forth in an angle. And I could have stopped at this point because it looks really pretty, but it's really fun to swirl things and so I kept going. So I went from the diagonal three separate times to get these swirls. Swirling the top of the soap is probably my favorite part because I love the different designs you get and how different each soap turns out. Then I'm taking some Solar Storm glitter and some Moroccan Sky glitter. These are both from Nurture Soap. And I'm going to just sprinkle this on top because I love glitter and as hard as I try, I can't help but sprinkle glitter on top of every kind of soap that I make. So then I'm gonna give it a quick spritz with some rubbing alcohol and then I'm going to put it, I like to put my soap in my fridge to help it set up. Now this was one day later. I should have let my soap set up longer. However, I was really excited about cutting it and getting this tutorial done. So here's me cutting the first batch of soap that I messed up on. And you can see it kind of wanted to be a teardrop. You can see a little bit of a hint of that shape, but the more I cut it, you'll notice that because I didn't pour evenly on each side, it kind of made a crazy design on the inside. Not that I mind it, it's just not a teardrop. So by evenly pouring it down each side at that last part, that's what gives you the teardrop. And that's the consistency of the soap batter and pouring it at the end is probably one of the, the key parts to getting a good teardrop for me. You can see there are a lot of really different designs in this. I actually like some of the cool swirls. I really liked that one. I kind of think it looks like a mermaid tail at the end there. Just pretty swirls. Another picture of the one that I think looks a little bit like a mermaid. You can see her tail on the right there. So that was my first failed attempt. Now I made another batch of soap exactly like this, but this time I poured them in evenly. Unfortunately, I didn't film that part. So I'm just gonna cut this one for you. If I had poured it evenly on both sides, this is what you'd get, more of a teardrop. And once this soap is also super, super soft, it would have been much better to let it set up for another day, but I was really excited to get this tutorial done, so I decided to cut it anyway. 
So you'll see we're starting to get that teardrop shape. Not a perfect teardrop, mind you, but this one definitely worked better than the last one I did. The crazy thing about soap is you never know what's going to happen. You can start out with a big plan and an idea in mind for what it will look like and you just don't know what your soap is going to do and how it will behave and so every time you make it, it is a fun adventure. And cutting it open is also one of my favorite parts because it's like Christmas. You get to see what's inside. And this is a little bit more of that teardrop. This fragrance, the Me and Yuzu from Matt Oils, is amazing. This was one of my favorite teardrops. And that one right there. And that's it, guys. You're all set. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. That would be awesome. You can check out more tutorials uh, on my YouTube channel, Untidy Artist, or at untidyartist.com. Check out some of my other soap tutorials, as well as other crafty, creative things. And as always, thank you guys so much. I appreciate your support, and we'll see you next time.